Europe is a great destination that offers so many things to see and do. And a recent survey in Condé Nast Travel Magazine showed that Florence was the most popular place in the world for American visitors. And that's where we are today, right in the heart of Florence, just two hours by train from Rome, and we've arrived at our comfortable Hotel Baglioni. I hope you're enjoying the hotel. Yes. 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 Nice. Grand nice. Hotel Baglioni. Yeah. Fabulous place, great breakfast. So this morning we're going to walk for about one hour. We're going to go to the Ponte Vecchio and the straw market along the way. And then we'll cross the Arno River and we're going to go to the Pitti Palace. And that's a wonderful art museum. And it's got about uh, 10 galleries, 10 rooms filled with beautiful paintings and beautiful statues and wall decoration and ceiling murals. And that should take us through till about noon. And then after the Pitti Palace, We'll start walking back and we'll find a place and have some lunch. And if you want to just go shopping on your own at that point back at the straw market, that's fine. It'll, it'll be open this afternoon. For those of you who'd like to continue on with this, we'll go to the Academia and see the Statue of David, the great piece by Michelangelo, which is arguably the most beautiful statue ever carved. So that's the plan for today. And then after 2 p.m., you'll be free to shop or take a siesta whatever. Then this evening, we'd like to uh, go to La Loggia restaurant, leaving here at 7 p.m. You'll find many excellent restaurants throughout Florence, and the simple neighborhood trattoria will offer you a great meal for maybe $20 for a fabulous dinner. Food is very important to the Florentines, and so is art and architecture, and so is shopping if you're a visitor to Florence. You'll certainly visit the straw market, they don't sell straw anymore, but 500 years ago when they first opened up shop, it was a straw market. Now it sells souvenirs for the tourists, belts, bags, wallets. And then there's the Ponte Vecchio, where they've got that famous gold jewelry. We've crossed the Ponte Vecchio to the other side of the Arno, approaching one of the greatest museums in the entire world, in the Pitti Palace. We're now in the main part of the museum. This is called the Palatine Gallery. And it was, the, it was the private apartments of the Medici. So for the next eight rooms that we're going through, it was their private <coughs> apartments. And this is actually how they had the paintings hanging when they were living here. This is their, their artworks, their private collection. Of course, the Medici, you know, were the, that powerful family. And we start with one of the masterpieces of the collection. This is uh, Venus by Canova. Now, Canova was the most important Italian sculptor of the 1820s, 1830s. So he's a little bit later in time than many of these other pieces. Most of the works in here are the old masters, painters like Titian, Tintoretto, Rubens, Velazquez, uh, painters of the 16th century and the 17th century. So Canova's a little bit later, actually 1820. But see how beautiful. We'll see other works by Canova when we get to Venice. And the ceilings <laughs> in the Palatine Gallery are painted by Pietro da Cortona. Pietro da Cortona. And he was the greatest of the ceiling painters of the Italian school. And there's a lot of mythological scenes. The PT offers a small but very dense concentration of great masterpieces. Well, thanks for the info, huh? Uh huh. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. We need to appreciate more that way. Mm -hmm. It helps to know what you're looking at. That's true, too. I enjoyed it very much. I really have a nice time. I like the gallery very much. Really? It's something else. Uh, really? Beautiful. The self-service restaurants found throughout Florence offer good quality cafeteria-style food at a very reasonable price. And then after lunch, you might get lucky as we did and run into a bunch of Spanish kids putting on a show in the streets.
we stumbled onto this dramatic parade. It turns out it's a reenactment of a Renaissance procession. And today's occasion is a game of soccer between two of the arch rivals of the city. You'll probably run into something like this if you spend a few days in Florence. Something else we always like to do in Florence is have a walking tour with a local guide. Now, this is the cathedral complex, and it is the it consists of the baptistery, the cathedral itself, and the bell tower. Now, this is the baptistery, as I told you outside, and where we're standing was the old baptism font, and it's right here in the center. It was very big, and they could baptize eight people at the same time by submersion. Now, this would be a typical street, a back street. This is the piazza of the government of the city. And you have the town hall, Palazzo Vecchio, the old palace. So this is Palazzo Vecchio. Now look and see how tall that tower is. That represents power, and that's as tall as they knew how to build towers at that time. They built the Uffizi over there. And the Uffizi Art Gallery comes from the name Offices because it was an office building with a museum on the top floor. And it was the sculpture museum that the Medici's owned before it became a picture museum. We've taken you on extensive tours of the Uffizi on other World Traveler episodes, so for now we're just taking a quick peek inside to remind you what a great museum this is for Italian Renaissance art. And there's a view of the Arno from there as well. Now we're going to go this way, all the way down to the Church of Santa Croce. Now this ch church was built at the end of the 1200s, the same man that began be building the cathedral, Arnolfo di Cambio, built this church as well. It's nowhere near as big as the cathedral, but he built it and he completed it. And he built it for the religious order of St. Francis of Assisi. Along with the great history and artworks you'll find in the Church of Santa Croce, there's another reason for visiting, and that's the leather school that's in the back of the church on the right side. They have some really good selections and some excellent prices for high-quality handmade leather goods. Here you'll find wallets, belts, shoes, purses, jackets, vests, and even skirts. A leather skirt. Is that the one? Is that the one you were modeling? You guys know the same design? And before you know it, you're underway. 